Hi, I'm Chris Mirror Windows, and hey, you can do this. Because this is Air Windows Busy Pod. So you might ask, what is the deal with a thing like this? It's acting very strangely. You have not heard the half of it. Watch this. Watch what it did with speed. That is Bessie Comp with the attack and release turned up so fast, it would normally be producing ginormous qualities of aliasing. But Bessie Comp is proof against aliasing. All I have to do is dial it back down, and I grant you that speed is not off the top of the charts, but I've made it on purpose so that you can do crazy things with it, just in case you wanted to. The idea with Bezicomp is it's doing the usual finding uh, compression setting, but it is reconstructing the uh, compression output through a Bezier curve. What that means is that when the compression kicks in, it can never kick in at an attack that is as fast as the fastest, for instance, of analog compressors or hybrid compressors like the famous distressor or a limiter. Because if you have those things, the ability of it to attack is so fast, it will produce aliasing. It will produce artifacts because it is changing the amplitude of the sound extremely quickly. Bezicomp works on a different kind of concept. I tell you what, rather than listen to it on a full mix, let's fire up just only drums and hear what it does on that. Because you might or might not want to be using Bezi Comp on a mix bus. It would take a little more delicate setting than what we've got here, but you might very well want to do extreme things. on some kind of track, like drums. So you'll notice we have compression turned up. Granted, it's not going up very much, but that's because it needs to be able to work with quiet tracks. And then if we mess with speed, let's know what happens. We're starting to get the attack poking through, like you can do by slowing down the attack of a compressor. Thing is, Bezicomp, which again, this is an experiment. This is not fully developed yet. Bezicomp is modulating the compression behavior based on a Bezier curve. Now one of the things that can do is make it not just a fixed compression attack and decay speed. In fact, it doesn't have a attack or decay speed. What this is, is essentially de-res, but for compression. So now we've got a very fast speed, uh, I'm sorry, backwards, a very slow speed, and it's responding to the density of the sound within the window of how slow the DRES is working. So you can plainly hear that it's slowing down to the point where it no longer makes much sense. 
In fact, I can make it cut out completely because you can over compress to the point where it forces silence at any speed. Dry wet is what you will use for ratio here. So what we're now doing is a slight compression just of the quietest bits, but the volume ramping it's doing is going up and down at a Bezier curve. So it's completely proof against any form of aliasing, which would be normal with something this extreme. And we can pretty well hear how its loud stuff is clamping a little bit. But we can use the dry wet to get it acting a little bit more normal. It's just boosting things in a funny way. It's boosting things in this way. This is the stuff that comes through the compressor. So as long as we're playing with a drum, with this new compressor, which works not like anything you've ever heard before, so I guess learn how to use this, basically. Let's see what we can do with speed. Okay, now our attack is poking through. It's going to be fairly delicate with this stuff. Word to the wise. but we can make it act a little bit more like a normal compressor. However, this is still operating on only Bezier curves. This is still not using a normal attack or release. And we can still use dry wet. For our ratio control. and bring in what's actually a fairly strong compression. Just by checking out what it sounds like on full wet and then using this for our ratio. And again, the modulation of the amplitude goes like this. So it's really not going to bring aliasing in at all, no matter what. Let's speed it up a little more. Okay, that's an aggressive sound. And we pull the compression back so that it's not silencing itself completely. And that is a very aggressively hyped compression sound. But we can also go to just dry. bring in a little of the compression just to get what we want out of it. And as we bring speed up and up, we're getting into that crazy zone where it is clamping all of the attacks pretty much, but it's starting to grind away the sound pretty aggressively. In this way, we're kind of eating up all the bass because it's all getting compressed. And then we can bleed in a little bit of this using the same trick of behaving like it's ratio. Or we can pull back on the compression, which is gonna, there's there's a, a way in which it over compresses to force things to silence, but we can dial that back simply by pulling compression back.
there's a compression sound you probably haven't heard before. It's very compressive. And it also behaves nicely using ratio. And we can dial the speed back now that we've cooled it off quite a bit. See, I'm listening to the kick drum transient. It's now doing an exaggerated kind of dynamics thing. So, and then if we bring the band back. acting fairly normal until we go to full compression. And full compression is fairly aggressive. If we're doing this on a mix bus, we probably want to go a lot slower. So now it's a little bit slower, and it's still using the compression, and we're doing a 100% ratio here, we're just not pushing it so hard. Again, by reference, here's drive. There you go. Again. This is kind of a new thing. This is Bezzy Comp, much like I am doing Bezzy Q and all, all that sort of thing. So what you're hearing when you hear that is a compressor where the attack and release are welded to this Bezier curve, which is the collective loudness of whatever is going into the compressor. And this is not a normal thing to do, so nothing else really works like this, and you got to learn it. Rather than there's not going to be any adjustments or, or advice for, oh, you should set the attack to 15 milliseconds, and then the ratio of, two, no, no, it's not going to work with any of those things. But those things work in the normal way. Rather than trying to construct a amplitude curve that's a Bezier curve, meaning a number of things. One of them is that rather than having an attack speed and a release speed, it has all attack speeds and all release speeds based on what the underlying track is doing. So it can kick in really, really fast if there's just a lot of dense stuff forcing it to, to swoop up quickly. If there's a gradual change in volume, it will also be gradual. But even in the abrupt quick changes in volume, it's going to have, like even the rate of change of the compression gets smoothed by virtue of it operating using a Bezier curve. And that's kind of novel. The closest I've gotten to that is my pressure plugins. And this is kind of a whole other thing. I'm probably not done with this. This is a, a sneak peek but one that you can immediately use and do stuff with if you find you kind of click with it. It's possible you won't. Like, uh, I realize sometimes these experiments come out kind of weird. My hope is I'll be able to wrestle this into a form where it will work with console H. Because I'd like to use a um, some novel sounds for that. And the trick is just making it so that it's not a bear to work. Because right now, it's you, you kind of have to wrestle it into shape. And I'm really interested to find out whether people find it easy to use or not. Uh, that doesn't necessarily stop me. 
I've spent the beginning of this afternoon uh, waiting for lawn mowing to stop so I could do my video and also fixing up my uh, reverb generator, which I've gone through like five changes in the last week or so, make, making a bunch of interesting breakthroughs. And I'm going to crank away at that as long as I have the inspiration to do it. Um, I hope you like Bazzy Q. I'm trying to keep stuff flowing. You could say, like, with the last couple of weeks of releases, it would be time for me to put out some more of the boring plugins. But no, no, you're gonna, you still get another interesting one. I'll, I'll put up more boring plugins soon. I promise. But uh, for now, enjoy the new revolutionary compressor that doesn't work like anybody else's compressor. That's just kind of how I roll. You're gonna have to get used to it. It is, of course, free and open source, so you can have it and use it. And even if you like, build its compression into your own stuff. All you got to do is credit me because it's MIT licensed. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.